Hello grade 12s and welcome to this series on acid and bases. This lesson will focus on the definition of an acid and a base according to Arrhenius' model. Acids and bases are chemicals found in food substances, laboratories or industries. Acids have a pH of less than 7. Bases have a pH of more than 7. Let's take a look at examples of acids and bases found in laboratories and in households. Hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid are examples of acids found in the laboratory, whereas acetic acid, which is also known as vinegar, and citric acid, commonly found in citrus fruits such as lemon juice, are examples of household acids. Sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are examples of bases found in the laboratory. Sodium bicarbonate and magnesium hydroxide are examples of household bases. Let's join Bruce as he defines an acid and a base according to Arrhenius' acid-base model or theory. Over to you, Bruce. So what we're going to have a look at now, and I'm taking it right up to the top here, are what we call our acid-base models. Now, guys, in science, when we talk about a model, what we are talking about is a representation of a particular, a particular thing. For example, if we're talking about an acid, how do we represent an acid? If we're talking about a base, how do we represent a base? What makes them characteristic? What sort of reactions can they undergo? And that allows us to draw up what this, 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 this term is known as, or what we call a model. Okay, so, guys, what is an acid? Well, an acid, according to our first definition, which was represented by a Swedish scientist by the name of Savante Arrhenius, 1887. So it becomes known as the Arrhenius de definition. He said that an acid releases a hydrogen ion into a solution. Okay, an acid releases a hydrogen ion into a solution. So when we go back up and we look, and let's see if you guys were correct, can you see now that if we look at, let's get a nice color pen here, do that one. Can you see that with our acids, we seem to have a lot of hydrogens. Okay, I'm just going to circle those and a hydrogen over there. We've got a common element that seems to um, precipitate itself through the actual formulas, the presence of hydrogen in the formula. So that's what Arrhenius actually jumped onto. And he said an acid will release a hydrogen ion into solution. So if I take hydrochloric acid over there, HCl, what actually happens is that hydrochloric acid undergoes a process known as ionization. I'll write that down. Okay, ionization. And what that ionization does is that it allows for the molecule to break up. Okay, remember guys, HCl is a covalent molecule. It allows it to break up into individual ions. So we're going from a covalent molecule to ions, and therefore we call that process ionization. And it releases a hydrogen ion into the solution. Now, let's think quite carefully before we move on. What, in actual fact, is a hydrogen ion? Well, if we think about hydrogen and its position on the periodic table, hydrogen, if we write down the AZ notation, is H11 which means it's got one proton in the nucleus and there's one electron orbiting around that nucleus. If we take away that electron, what are we actually left with? We are left with a proton. So the hydrogen ion itself is simply a proton that is found present in the actual solution itself. Okay. Now, the big question is, can protons exist by themselves in solution? And this is what Arrhenius now had to start thinking about. He's made the statement, he's, he's identified that acids will, re will release hydrogen ions, which are protons, into the solution, but can they actually exist? And the answer was or is no. Arrhenius discovered that the proton is not able to exist on its own. And straight away, it starts to look to 
combine with something else. And what it actually does is, is that it combines with a water molecule that is part of the solution. Okay, so when we're talking about these solutions, we're talking about aqueous solutions. They are acids dissolved in water. And what actually happens is that we form this particular substance there called H3O+. Plus. So in other words, that hydrogen ion adds to the hydrogen, sorry, to the water. We increase the number of hydrogens to three, but now because of that charge there, we must have an overall charge on that. And this is known as the hydronium ion. Okay, so when acids dissolve in water, according to Arrhenius, we produce hydronium ions in the solution. And the hydronium ion is equivalent to say, well, it's the hydrogen ion in all, in all, in all um, seriousness. Okay, so that is now Arrhenius' understanding of what an acid actually is. So what he was able to do was to say, okay, if that's true, then we are able now to include water in the reaction of the acid when we add the acid to water. So we take HCl, the hydrochloric acid, we add it to water, and we produce the hydronium ion and obviously the residue, the leftover chloride ion in solution. And this is known as the Arrhenius equation for acid ionization. Acid ionization, the ionization of the HCO molecule to form an H3O plus hydronium ion and a chloride ion in solution. And that is how hydrochloric acid exists when it's in a bottle, when you buy the bottle of hydrochloric acid of, uh, and it's, it's put into your school laboratory. Also remember guys, we can also get hydrochloric acid fairly commercially as well, especially if you've got swimming pools at home because we need hydrochloric acid to adjust the, uh, the, the levels of pH. And we'll talk about pH um, probably a little bit later on. Adjust the pH levels in the pool to make the pool nice and safe for swimming and also to keep the algae away, during, especially during summer. So let's practice now. And I've put a couple of little examples here. Let's pull them up. Where I've got what happens now when we've got H2SO4. Well. What happens with H2SO4? As we know, we're going to undergo ionization. Because there are two hydrogens, okay, we can produce two hydrogen ions, okay, plus a sulfate ion like that. Okay? But remember, guys, that that hydrogen ion is going to react immediately with water. So what we can do is write this down as H2SO4 plus H2O will give me Two, whoopsie, I just want to just uh, neaten that up a little bit for you like that. And we've got an arrow there, gives us two H3O plus, plus SO4, two minus, and I need to make sure that I balance it there as well. So can you see now that sulfuric acid is able to release two hydrogen ions, which means now that we need two water molecules to form two hydronium ions, and the sulfate ion as the residue. Okay. What about the nitric acid? Well, nitric acid, can you see it's only one? So it's very similar to the, uh, to the hydrochloric acid. It will release H plus and NO3 one minus. That will react with the water. So what do we now have is nitric acid plus water to give me one hydronium ion plus the nitric ion that's present there. And then our guys, and I'll just underline them nicely for you, are our two ionization equations, according to Arrhenius, that now shows how we ionize acids in solution. And it's the presence of these hydronium ions in solution that makes an acid an acid. That's the important thing. Okay, hope you guys have got that. Um, just to carry on with a little bit more over here. Um, as I put here in the, in the blue writing, thus an acid will increase the hydronium concentration in water. So the more acid we add to water, the more hydronium ions we are going to be producing, and the more hydronium ions we produce, therefore the stronger the acid, or more concentrated the acid, which I'd rather say. Okay, now let's have a look 
at a base. Now, a base is actually very simple. In fact, it's much simpler than explaining the assets. And Arrhenius didn't have too much of a trouble trying to sort this one out. Because what did he say? He said a base will simply release a hydroxide ion into solution. So we go all the way back and look at our formulas for our bases. Can you see now that every base we've got there, or the base that I've got there, have got the OH group present. In other words, the presence of the hydroxide ion. So what happens is that all we simply do is we take the sodium hydroxide, we place it into water, and we simply get what is called a dissociation. We get a dissociation. Notice now, we're not talking about an ionization. An ionization takes place when you have a covalent molecule forming ions. Here we have an ionic substance, sodium hydroxide, sodium cation, the hydroxide anion. It's an ionic substance. All it's doing in the presence of water is breaking up into its individual ions. So we call that a dissociation. So if we have a look at other examples, what can we do? Very simple. All we have to do is look at uh, the next example, which is ammonium hydroxide. When we spoke about that, that's in handy handy. Ammonium hydroxide will simply break up into the ammonium cation plus the hydroxide anion. And the next example, potassium hydroxide, will simply dissociate into the potassium cation and the hydroxide anion. And guys, can you see now? There is the Arrhenius base. The Arrhenius base is telling us that we are going to be releasing hydroxide ions into solution. Okay, so to summarize the Arrhenius definition, which is our first attempt at an acid-base model, remember 1887, a long time ago, what did Arrhenius say? He said, acids will release hydrogen ions into solution. The hydrogen ions will immediately react with the water because they're simply protons and therefore protons very reactive can't exist by themselves and we form hydronium ions. Bases will simply release hydroxide ions into solution. Okay, and that's what makes a base a base. However, there was a slight problem and I've put it over here. There was a limitation. In other words, the Arrhenius definition, the Arrhenius model, had a flaw. And what was that flaw? Well, very importantly, it could only explain acid-base reactions of substances in solution. It could not explain acid-base reactions in other phases. And that was the problem with the Arrhenius definition. Now, obviously, they had to now modified. Someone had to go out there, someone had to go and think about it, someone had to come up with a better idea. And guys, in the 1920s, there was a breakthrough in the understanding of acids and bases. That was an improvement on the Arrhenius model. It allowed for the understanding of acids and bases beyond just simply in solutions. And it allowed for acids and bases, base reactions, I'd rather say, to take place between gases, to take place between gases and liquids, between gases and solids, between solids and solids even. And we can find now that acid-base reactions can occur through all the phases. And the two scientists were named Bronsted and Lowry. And when we come back from the break, Indiana, mm -hmm. I'm going to chat a little bit about the Bronsted-Lowry theory, the Bronsted-Lowry model for acids and bases. <laughs> This brings us to the end of our lesson on the Arrhenius definition of an acid and a base grade 12s. You'll also find more information about acids and bases at www.mindsearch.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Goodbye.